right, in this video, we're going to be showing you how to make aircrete, how we cast this round structure, as well as how we slip formed this Adobe Tiny structure. And from now on, we're going to be including a how to section on aircrete in every video toward the end because I forget that some people are just finding this information. So if you like this sort of information, if you want to stay updated, then certainly uh, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, and leave a comment. And we'll randomly select one lucky user every week to receive a free copy of the Introduction to Aircrete video course. And if I also encourage you to click the link below to check out the Trilingual School of Alternative Building coming up October 9th, and where you can get the hands-on experience to do everything to not only make Air Creek, but make a house comfortable and functional with air conditioning, electric, solar, everything for off-grid. So let's get this started. First off, getting started on a project like this, it really is often best to get on the land right away. And I know a lot of people want to go out and buy some kind of little RV to stay on the land, but honestly, um, you could just stay in a tent underneath a tarp for a couple of weeks because that's all it takes to finish one little room. And these little aircrete rooms are infinitely superior to an RV. They stay warmer, much warmer in the winter, much cooler in the summer. They're, they're easy to heat and cool. They protect you from the storms. They won't blow away. And also, the small room is something that the average person will be able to finish. You'll be able to get that win underneath your belt because, I mean, there comes a time in any project where it honestly seems overwhelming or like it will never get done, especially if you've never done construction before and even more so if you've never worked a physical job before. So I highly encourage people to start building in small structures and completing them. You know, be very intentional, whether you want a 3,200 square foot house or a 50,000 square foot house or a tiny house, design it to be built in a modular fashion, that is piece by piece, so that in the end you'll have the house you want, but it can be completed in small stages. A house that is moved into before it's finished is often never done and you'll never be fully happy with it and of course it gives you the added benefit of having something to live in right away even a small structure uh, like this initial uh, tiny room you could sponge bathe in it and do most of your living outdoors and have a wonderfully safe and comfortable place to stay when the weather is not uh, acceptable so to start with any project, you have to level the ground. And then I glued together some strips of utility plywood and created a ring for the foundation. We laid in some rebar. And then we just mixed up some sackcrete and poured it into the form. And with the footing done, we then took more utility plywood and built two rings to form a four inch thick wall. Why four inches? Well, that's because the engineering here showed that four inches was more than adequate for this size structure for the roof load we were gonna put on it. And of course, you should always do the engineering uh, to make sure your structure is gonna be safe as it's built with green aircrete. And in the link below, you can find videos and workshops and the Trilingual School of Alternative Building uh, I encourage you to check those out because you'll learn how to safely engineer your structure. Then with your form set up, it was time to make the aircrete. And making the aircrete, um, you're going to need to make a foam solution. It takes five gallons of foam solution to make one six cubic foot batch of aircrete. So I would encourage you to mix more than that so that you have enough to adequately measure your foam and then uh, complete a batch. In fact, I would encourage you to just make a batch big enough to complete the day's work, like a 25 gallon batch in a trash can or another barrel. This needs to be filled with your soapy solution, you know, either 16 ounces uh, per five gallon bucket of um, 3x Dawn dish soap, but really I highly recommend you just buy the purpose made Drexel foam agent 
and to make a mix that is going to work for even beginners uh, start with one ounce of Drexel foam to one gallon of water and then you're going to pump this through a 1.2 gallon per minute pump uh, and then combine it with air from an air regulator that is supplied by a air compressor delivering 90 psi at four cubic feet per minute then it's just a matter of adjusting the air regulator to give yourself a 95 gram per quart batch of foam you really don't want it any heavier and wetter than that and you really don't want, you especially don't want it any lighter and drier than that then it's just a matter of adding five to seven gallons of water to your 50 gallon drum uh, take a 92 pound sack of cement and slowly add that to the water as you mix it then once you have this slurry made it's time to inflate this turn on your foam machine and begin mixing mix your foam until it reaches six cubic feet in the barrel which you can calculate and mark on the outside of the barrel. This entire foam machine uh, makeup, uh, how to put it together, what parts to use, uh, I'll include the part list below in the description, but also in the video courses it teaches you how to make this foam generator. And at the Trilingual School of Alternative Building, you can actually bring out your own parts and we will assemble your foam generator together on site uh, that way, if you have any questions or you're unsure about something or uncomfortable about working with some aspect of it, you'll have guidance and help right there with you. So check that link out for the Trilingua School of Alternative Building below. Now, after having mixed your aircrete to six cubic feet, I just took a five gallon bucket and bucketed out the aircrete and filled in the form. The really nice thing with a round form is it's self-supporting. You want to mix, you want to fill this form with air creek to not more than probably 16 inches maximum and 12 inches would be more realistic each day. So it's going to take you about eight to nine days to put your form up and to fill it with air creek. At the very top, we finish with a bond beam to distribute the load of the roof over the air creek, which is a softer material. And you can find more details about that in our step-by-step -step guide to building an off-grid tiny house in the description below and at our workshops. And with the walls up, you want to apply the proper reinforcing fabric that will be impregnated within an acrylic cement mixture. You simply apply a thick layer of this mixture to the wall. You wrap the fabric, wet it down, and work that cement mixture through the fabric, and then you apply your acrylic or, or synthetic stucco finish mix to the outside of that. And then it's just a matter of applying an elastomer paint. We also teach how to put this nanotechnology together with the paint. Uh, as well as the best sources and how to use it properly for maximum effect at the Trilingual School of Alternative Building. See the link below. With the walls up and reinforcement fabric applied, uh, we wanted to put on a dome roof on this, but because we had workaway students coming uh, and time and weather just weren't going to permit, uh, instead I just threw on some quick trusses made out of a two by four cut in half. Uh, and with the diagonals in here, we tested these braces and they did not fail until over 800 pounds of force was applied to them. So far more than adequate for this light roof. So we glued every single junction of wood. We used a piece of, of plywood glued at each junction or gusset to hold everything together. And then we laid down two by four laths crossways to give us something to screw our roofing tin to. This whole structure was completed um, for about $530 and that includes a uh, through the mail foam mattress and building a platform to put the bed and a box of wooden laminate flooring. 
Um, inside the foundation ring that was finished by digging it out, leveling it and packing it, laying down plastic and then mixing more aircrete and filling in the floor with aircrete. And that gives us an insulating floor that makes it even easier to heat and cool. So in only 10 days this first little structure was finished. And if I don't know if you've seen any of the tiny house stuff, but the tiny houses are often only 75 square foot and this little tiny eight foot interior diameter structure has 50 square foot and it is enough to live in and make do you can take sponge baths and it can get out of the weather you can do most of your living outside or you could put a little cabinet in there to cook on and store some things in but it's not an end all it's just the beginning and at this point, you have a place to live that's very comfortable, fireproof, uh, flood and rot proof. It's, it's because it's round and no storm can take it away. Um, it's very secure, comfortable, cozy place to live. Starting the next structure, because I like to change things up, I wanted to do a Pueblo style house because I just kind of love the way they look and do a different form of building as well using slip forms. So again, to get this structure started, we put down the foundation uh, by uh, leveling up the ground, putting down uh, just two by fours and laying in two rings of steel rebar and hand mixing sackcrete and filling that form in, screeding it off level. And we made this footing a foot wide to distribute the weight on the earth better. It's just more sound engineering. Um, in this structure, it's also basically a ring footing or foundation, and the inside will be uh, poured with either aircrete or just plastic and foam insulation board and laminate flooring. So you have a nice, soft, giving, uh, flexible floor when you put the uh, tongue and groove laminate on top of it. <clears throat> so. The slip forms were built just using sanded plywood and one by four boards all glued together. We form an inside ring and an outside ring. We caulk the foundation so the air creek doesn't leak on the first level. And then again, we just begin mixing our air creek. We fill our forms up to the top and that's it for the day. The rest of the day you can do as you wish. Each day the slip form is moved up and reassembled and reclamped together. More aircrete is mixed and filled in. And as you get higher, you can go ahead and put the reinforcing fabric on with the finished coats. I find it kind of nice actually to build this way because you don't have to feel guilty about not doing enough work for a day. You just come out, you mix aircrete for an hour, you clean up your tools and you're gone. And, and once we reach the roof line level again, uh, we put down a bond beam and we put on our support roof beams, which protrude through the structure because it's a, a Pueblo style structure. And we lay down a roof decking using floor decking actually. And we poured another six inches of aircrete on top of this. And then we've set our slip forms one more time on top to pour up another level to make it look nice. And the top level of aircrete, we finished off with a layer of cement uh, because we could, we want to distribute the weight as we're probably gonna occasionally have a chair or some furniture up there to sit on top of the house. And then this was sealed off with a silicon roofing uh, finish just like you would use on any commercial flat roof. The whole structure was painted up with an elastomer paint. A custom door was assembled and hung on hinges. And just like that, we've got our, section, our second structure finished and we've got enough uh, room in there to put a little tiny couch, uh, a little desk and a kitchenette. You know, just enough room to have some company, to use it as office space, to work in, to cook and to also uh, go over to the bedroom. Um, the total square footage of these two structures is 114 square foot, um, truly a tiny house. 
but you wouldn't have to stop there. Uh, if I was going to continue expanding this, I would add a bathroom on uh, to have the shower and the toilet separately. And the whole structure uh, is done and complete for about $1,124, including the little air conditioner and the heater. If you're interested in finding out how I did the conversion on the window unit, uh, just look at the other videos on my channel. And also, if you want to learn how to size and install your own air conditioning system, including mini split air conditioners, click the link below in the description to find out more about the Terlingua School of Alternative Building, as well as the step-by-step -step guide to building your own off-grid tiny house. And because it's so teensy tiny, um, I put a kilowatt hour meter on the air conditioner and this whole structure is going to cost less than $11 a month to heat and cool. And for more information on how to put together these slip forms and various methods to do this and how to use the slip forms, uh, check out the Trilingua School of Alternative Building link below. In and also uh, the details will be added to our complete step-by-step -step, uh, off-grid online video course that is available and you can find the link for that below also. Um, if you want to learn how to build a complete house, to do the wiring, to design and build a solar system including building your own lithium ion battery packs for a tremendous savings of money, how to install battery management systems, how to do rainwater collection and recycling, how to do flooring and tile work, how to size and install mini split air conditioning systems, um, just absolutely everything including plumbing, foundation work, the whole shebang, everything that you need to be able to build and finish a house and make it livable uh, is being taught at the Trilingual School of Alternative Building. So click the link below to find out more about that and also check out our online video courses. Um, and I will mention that with the Trilingua School of Alternative Building, you're getting a copy of all the video courses, so you have it as reference material. And the value of all of that, including the consulting time we're throwing in, is equal to the price of the class. And next year, the price of the class is going to go up quite a bit. So if you can attend this year, if this is something you've been considering, I encourage you to click the link in the description to find out more about the Trilingua School of Alternative Building. Have a great day.